old Texas Trail. Don't go right now that old Texas Trail. Don't go right now that trail. I'll weep and I'll wail. Honey, don't go riding down that Texas Trail. This is Garrett from 11 Bang Bang. Today we have a real treat. Now this is not going to be an in-depth historical video. A little breezy. It's a nice day out here today. It's a uh, day before Easter and uh, I have out the original 1873 trapdoor carbine although this is actually an 1877 star carbine. We'll get into that just here in a little bit. It is not made by star of course. It's just what is called a star carbine. We have a 1877 butt plate here that actually has the trap door in the butt plate and a cleaning rod in there in three pieces. That's something they kind of figured after Custer and uh, the 1876 campaign. When the guys were getting their carbines jammed up with copper cartridges and had no cleaning rod up here, of course, they had no way of really cleaning them out except pocket knife. That was replaced the very next year in 1877. They went to this particular butt plate and butt stock that has that in it and you can just screw it together throw it down the barrel and you will be good to go now this gun does have a reef sanded refinished stock on it and that's okay because if it had been all original i would not be able to afford it but whoever did it did a really good job we got good carbine sights here uh the door was a little loose when we got it it's got new springs in it and uh, that really did a good job of tightening that door up enough talking about the gun this isn't a real history video this is just this morning I sat down and I loaded up 30 or 40 rounds of original carbine ammo, which means I have 55 grains of powder in here, homemade 2F, our own homemade 2F, a 405 grain hollow base bullet, and a card filler between the two. So the way we're gonna do this is this gun, compared to some of the earlier ones we've already looked at, has a three notch tumbler, so we can go back there to half cock and actually get the door open. We're going to insert our cartridge there and now technically you should go back down to the safety notch and now the gun is safe to carry i've never shot this gun before so we're going to go out here and see what we can do on one of these white plates at 30 yards just to kind of see where it's hitting at all right so never shot this gun before and i am left-handed so of course when we do the history series on this gun ethan is going to shoot them because militarily you would use this gun right-handed but just for the fun of it here we're going to take this 55 grain round I'm going to go out to that white plate on the left and see just where it hits. So I aimed right in the middle and I probably flinched just a little bit because that was my first shot with this gun. And at that range, it looks like we're hitting about four inches high. So without further ado, all you got to do is, by the way, if I was doing that correctly, I go two clicks, open it, kicks the shell out. And by the way, guys, that really is probably why this particular gun did beat the Remington in trials <laughs> and Remington uh, rolling block never necessarily got the uh, recognition that the trap door did even though it might be maybe a little stronger action did not have ejection now I have another round here Let's pop it in there see how that's gonna go and I was kind of worried about that because this particular round is a little bit janky has a little bit of a lip there it might not come out too easy let's go out here to 40 yards Make sure everything's closed. Let's see if we can hit the 40 yard red plate. Yes, sir. Seems to be favoring slightly to the right, but uh, that's okay. Now let's see if this little out of shape cartridge comes out. If not, oh, came right out of there. Very good. We are going to keep our brass. So today we are actually shooting this carbine, but we're actually loading out of a cartridge belt that is designed for what the military would have used in the 1880s. If you look down here at this cartridge belt, you will see that we have around 30 loops. I've actually cut a few of the loops on this one to hold 45 Colt, so I could load both if I wanted to in this cartridge belt. So 
So obviously we're hitting between four and six inches high at 30 yards, but I just wonder with this little light 55 grain charge, how we're gonna do at 100. I wonder if it'll fall right in at 100 and maybe that's where this is sighted in. I have been studying a lot on these guns, but uh, you know, I haven't read everything obviously, especially not of the 1877 further on. Most of my study thus far is centered on the 1865 through 1870 guns. But without further ado, let's get out here and see what we can do at the 100 yard plate. Well, we hit it, didn't we? Yeah. Did it go right just again? Yeah, it hit just on the right hand side. For some reason, this gun is shooting just to the right. Let's try that one more time. We went that casing. Oh well. If we were in a military situation, we wouldn't be worried about picking them up, I guess. I love how this gun just kicks them out. Well, thank you, cameraman. Mm -hmm. All right, since we're favoring right, let's go ahead and see if we can pull that to the center of the plate. Yes, sir. I hit it both times, but the first time I just barely nicked it to the right. And as you can tell, even with just 55 grains, this gun of powder, this, this round still hits with a lot of authority out there. Still a 405 grain bullet traveling pretty good click of speed there. And uh, all right, so we know what we can do there. Let's move out to 150 and see if we can accomplish anything. Whoa! All right, let's try a little more up close shooting. That's kind of fun. All right, guys, so we found out that I'm consistent at 100 with this gun. Not so consistent at 150. Make sure everything's latched up. Let's step back out here to 25 and hit this red plate maybe. Yes, sir. I just know exactly about how high those are hitting. Now, as you'll notice, things are starting to heat up. Even with brass cartridges, the gun is going to start getting a little sticky to eject. And maybe eventually here, if I can find that last cartridge I had, maybe eventually here we will get to where we have to use that cleaning rod to clear it which will be fine because then we can show it. All right, let's shoot a gong. Yes, sir. That little carbine cartridge hits hard. All right, thing about this belt is sometimes finding the next cartridge when you get back behind there ain't too easy. Let's go for uh, one of the smaller plates on the bottom there. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down to safety and pick up that piece of brass. All right, let's shoot one of these smaller plates here at 25. One thing you got to do, that sight can kind of move around a little bit on you, so you kind of make sure it's right for smaller targets. Did you hit high? We caught that one. I think I hit high on that little plate. Obviously, the gun is always going to shoot a little higher at closer range. Always want to make sure everything's closed up and ready to go. Yes, sir. That might be a little hot for those little stainless steel targets. <laughs> we might bend it a little bit. Okay, let's go over here to the rail and do a little work. I'm just having a blast with this gun today. These 55 grain charges, like I said, they hit with enough authority to do what they need to do, but they're not real hard on your shoulder. Let's shoot a few targets on the rail, we say. Not if we shoot over. We might be a little close. All right, let's try that again. So aim a little lower. Make sure my sight hadn't creeped up there. Yes, sir. Put a little dent in it, but that's what they're there for. They're cheap and easy to fix. All right. What else should we shoot? I believe we have a little red target over there that's a knockdown target I'd like to try if the cameraman would run over there and set that up. <laughs> run, cameraman, run! He ain't running very fast, is he? So, I'm actually not going to load till he gets that set up. That's about 25 yards over there. Somebody's already shot it and didn't repaint it. All right, so here we go. Can you see the little red target, cameraman? Yeah, now. 
I believe we hit it. Pee. That is so much fun, guys. Let's uh, turn around here and work on these railroad plates just a little bit. Railroad plates, 15 yards. If I miss this, that'd be kind of sad. Ooh, broke a wire. That's how we like it. Let's go. The natives are upon us. And our cartridge belt is under our suspenders. And you gotta reach back here and find that next one. It would be uh, way easier to do this with a. Uh, here, here, battle buddy, let me help you. It would be considerably easier to do this with a cartridge box. I feel. How many rounds we got left back here? Uh, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Quite a few, huh? Like eight. Yes, sir. Got that cleared off. We're gonna step back quite a little ways, and I'm gonna attempt shooting that lower jug now it's never been shot it's a propane bottle it does not have any pressure coming out of the top of it but since it's never been shot we want to be quite a ways back so we're going to step back here about 50 yards and see if i can put a bullet through that thing i want to see if i can shoot that and like i said it shouldn't have any pressure in it but we just don't know so we're going to find out now did we go clear through it i do not know Let's go find out. I don't think it has any pressure in it. All right, we did not go clear through it, but we did get into it and there's no pressure. And now there is a 405 grain slug in there. See, we have a paint can here that I don't believe has ever been shot. It's got a little left in it. Let's step back and blow that up and see what happens. 15 yard spray paint can. See if we even hit it. I think we hit it. All right, Tactical Timmy's going to shoot the 40-yard red gong. Just remember, it shoots right. But you hit it. Hit it right where you did. Yep. What do you think, Tactical Timmy? Is that tactical enough for the 1880s? Oh, definitely. I like this rifle. Or All this right. Movie, carbine or carbine. So last night I was actually watching a movie called Springfield Rifle with Gary Cooper. Now, it had Gary Cooper in it. But there were very few Springfields and there were really no rifles. As a matter of fact, the only Springfield rifle that was in the movie, Springfield Rifle, was a gun that they were using to simulate a P-53 infield, basically. But they did have a few uh, Springfield carbines in it. However, the movie was set during the Civil War and all of their Springfield carbines had Buffington rear sights on it. But to prove how fast he could shoot, Gary Cooper was uh, holding the cartridge in his mouth, one in his hand, one in the gun and shooting just as fast as he could so let's see how fast i'm left-handed too so that's going to give me a little bit of a disadvantage on the right-handed action let's see how fast we can run a trap door well not too fast that you can't get them down there Now, is it lever action fast? No, but that uh, smokes a muzzle loader by a considerable amount. That's why a lot of people complain about these things at the Battle of Little Bighorn. No, they're not as fast as a lever action, but they're not that far behind, especially when you run out of ammo in your lever action and have to start feeding. You may, over a group of say 50 shots, you may actually be able to run this just as fast because if you've got a pile of ammo next to you, you don't have to worry about feeding it into the magazine. Obviously, also in a Winchester, you can load through the top too, but when it becomes a matter of more than the tube full of ammo that you have, this gun is more robust and probably over, say, 50, 60 shots, it's not going to be that much slower, especially when you have to start reloading your lever action rifle. So that's all we have for the Springfield trap door. Earlier in the video, I said I was going to explain to you what the star meant on this gun. So what that represents is that this gun was probably made in 1877, early 1877. However, in 1880, they brought all the guns back into the Springfield armory that had been made beforehand, and any of them that had had the high arch or had had any other issues were given new receivers with new trapdoors that were slightly wider. Meaning that, yes, we have the old 1873 marked lock plate on it and the old style hammer, 
but it has a new wider receiver post 1880. And when they did that, they simply took the serial number that was already on the receiver and stamped it with a star, meaning that yes, this gun is mostly a Hall still original, with the exception of the trigger. Someone has put a serrated trigger in this that would have not came around until 1882. So as always, trust in God, keep your powder dry. Thanks for watching, and bye.